Blessed are you, holy and living one. We remember before God and one another, our siblings in Galveston, Texas, who on this day received the glad tidings of their emancipation and the grave sins that delayed that liberating word. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, source of all Give heart every good gift. You create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you have loved us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are are basing judgments on others on the color of skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be the beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most loving God, through your Son, Jesus, who came among us as a slave, choosing rather to serve his disciples than to be served by them, help us in our weakness not to seek to oppress others, nor to make peace with any form of exploitation, but in all things earnestly and of our own free will, to seek to serve each other, following Christ's good example, through the same Christ our Savior. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Alas, for you desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? Is it darkness, not light? As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. By the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. For those who led us away captive asked us for a song, and our oppressors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let me begin by saying how joyful I am for us to be here today. It is always good when the family of God's people come together to give God worship and praise. Over the last few years, I have been invited to speak or preach in different places on the theme of being black. A few years ago, I was, be, I was invited to preach at a UBE conference in LA. And the theme they asked me to preach on was, what does it mean to be black in America? Well, the people who were there kind of got uh, an earful. I went on apparently for an hour and 15 minutes. Don't worry, it's not going to be that today. A couple of years ago, I got invited to speak on the topic of what does it mean to be black and Episcopal. It didn't take as long, but it also gave them an earful. Today, I'm here to preach to you, to talk to you, to share with you some thoughts from the Christian perspective of the Feast of Juneteenth. And because of that, I think it is imperative that I begin with opening up with some ideas of truth beyond the basic history that is told about Juneteenth. 
one of the most important things to recognize about this day is that we do not celebrate on Juneteenth that the people, the enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas, got to hear that they were free. I am sorry. They already knew that they were free. They knew that they were free from the moment they came to life. And no matter how many beatings and shacklings and humiliation they were put through, their freedom was never in question. They knew that they were free. Second, that was not the day they got the news of the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. They already knew that that was in place. There was no question in their hearts and minds that people somewhere else had already signed that declaration. What they were witnessing on what we now call Juneteenth was when finally the U.S. Army came to Galveston, Texas to enforce a law that had already been in place for over two years. Because they by themselves couldn't do it because the reality is that they were outnumbered about two to one with the ones who wanted to continue the institution of slavery in America. And last but not least, it is imperative that I say that Juneteenth, June 19, 1865, did not end the oppression of black people in America. And with that, I go to Jesus. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus in the synagogue in Nazareth. And as he is before the people of God present there, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah is given to him. And he unrolls it to this spot, this spot where we find what is now known in our Bibles today as chapter 61 of the book of Isaiah. Chapter 61 and 62 of the book of Isaiah are a poem from the prophet Isaiah proclaiming how God's glory was going to be shown in the liberating work of the people of God, the people of Israel. This is only but one portion of a very long poem from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah was, was speaking to the people of God in a situation of oppression about how God was going to come and restore, first free, liberate, and then restore the glory that Israel knew before. And Jesus reads these words and sits down and says, today these words have, been, have come true in your hearing. Jesus is now repeating the words of Isaiah to let the people of Israel know God is working still. God is once again showing God's power to liberate, but he's not going to liberate you simply from the powers of enemies that are outside you, but rather from the forces of the enemy that live within you the enemy of sin that is holding you to a life that is less than the life for which God created you and saw you and said, it is good. Captivity both external and internal can stop us from living fully into the freedom that God had in store for us from the moment we were created. This is the liberation that Jesus wants to proclaim to God's people in his time. And we know that the people of the time of Jesus didn't want to hear about it. That is why they put him to death. That is why they were finding, trying to find all kinds of ways to get rid of him. He was trying to change things in a way that would affect them, and particularly the leaders, their power, their position, their authority, their money. They were not having it. 
It is better for one to die so that we can have our way. My beloved, it was no different than the situation that the people in Galveston, Texas were living when their oppressors were doing everything they could to hold on to this institution that was allowing them to make money, that was allowing them to, to reign over others. In the midst of that, those children of Africa who were living under the institution of slavery knew that that was not the way God intended for them to live. They were fighting. In spite of the fact that many of them were put to death, they were fighting. They did not wait for the army to come to enforce emancipation. They were fighting. Even before Lincoln signed the Emancipation Declaration, they were fighting. And my beloved, we continue fighting today. Because even to this day, the powers and systems of oppression hold us down. And I'm not even talking only about black people. Yes, we feel it. We feel the hundreds of years of oppressive systems that have tried to keep us down. I wish I could say that it was only targeted towards people of African descent. But you know as well as I do that the oppressive systems of our society today are reigning so that all others can feel the power of those who are in charge. We hear about things like voter suppression. Why would you want to suppress somebody's vote if you know you were doing the right thing? If you knew you were doing the right thing, you would have give them the freedom to choose wherever they wanted to. But when you don't know that you're doing the right thing, you can do anything to hold on to power, even if it's not yours to have. If we were all free, there would be no need for women's marches. But we need women's marches because there are still men living in the world today who think that they have the power not only to tell women what to do, but to own them as their property. Marches for women need to continue on. Next Sunday, here in San Francisco, we have the Pride March. We would not need a Pride March if our LGBT siblings in Christ were able to live fully and openly into who they know God made them to be. But we know that around this country and around this world, there are people who are still trying to tell other people what God wants for them because they know better than the people who's living their lives what is best for them. The systems of oppression exist to this day, my beloved. And this is where I believe that the people of God in the world today have a calling and a responsibility. In the same way in which the prophet Isaiah proclaimed in that beautiful long poem how God was going to come into the world and unbind all forms of oppression and bring up those who are low and put down those who are in power. In the same way in which Jesus proclaimed to those first century people that the word was being come to reality right before their hearing. In that same way, the church of God in the world today is called to let the people of the world know God is liberating here and now. We need to let the world know through the work that we do in the church as the body of Christ but the liberating power of God is at work right here and right now. They say that the church should not be involved in politics. Well, my brothers and sisters, if politicians are holding God's people down, we need to say something. We need to speak up. 
if it's the 1% who hold power and influence and money, who are doing everything they can so that they can continue to make inordinate amounts of money, it is the responsibility of the people of God, the church, to speak out. If it is true that the reason that gas prices are going the way they are is because there are a few people who are trying to take advantage so that they can fill their coffers more, it is our responsibility as the church to speak up. When we see every single day that there are oppressive systems that are hurting God's creatures in the world, my beloved. It is our responsibility to speak up. And there are two ways of speaking, two important things we need to do in our speech. We need to speak about the truth, about the systems of oppression that exist. We need to speak face to face to those who are carrying out the oppression. I love the blessing that Bishop Mark always gives us. And it, it is written, it actually is written as one of the options for the blessing on Juneteenth. But there's a line that you use, Bishop, that is not in there. And make no peace with oppression. Be it, make peace with everyone, but make no peace with oppression. We cannot make peace with systems that oppress God's creatures in the world. And then there's the other way we need to speak, and this is the most important one, I believe. We need to bring the word, the good news, to those who feel themselves oppressed. Remind them that they are created free, good. Remind them of whose image they were made in. Remind them of their value. And remind them that God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the entire body of Christ is behind them to support them. And just as the U.S. Army did in 1865 to bring the power of God down, to liberate them from the systems of oppression that are trying to keep them down. My beloved, that is our responsibility. If the people of God, those of us who call ourselves Christians, followers of the liberating Christ, don't do it, who else will? If we are not willing to live our faith in our works, then who should we expect to do it? If we, the ones who proclaim that we believe in a Christ that was willing to die on the cross for us, if we are not willing to do it, who should we expect to do it? My beloved, this is our time. This is our place. This is our responsibility. I pray that the spirit of Juneteenth not simply be one that we remember on June 19th every year, but one that carries us every day as God's people to recognize when we see oppression, speak up against it, and act to liberate those who find themselves under those types of burden. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God gives us the wisdom and the strength to carry it out. Amen.
upon the spirit that anointed Jesus to bring good news to the oppressed. truth and visit your church. Make us faithful to the good news of emancipation and through us heal the sins of slavery and racism by which we deny you and our neighbor. Come, spirit of righteousness, and descend upon all in authority. By the public enactment of their duties and offices, let the torrents of justice flow and waters of right action thus forth. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. one and father of the poor, rouse grateful hearts for fathers and figures of fatherly guidance and love, and heal those relationships separated by distance, incarceration, estrangement, or death. Come, advocate and guide, visit all who are incarcerated, detained, or bound in any way. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come, healing spirit, and relieve those who suffer any illness or distress, especially those we name now in the chat or whose names we speak aloud in this cathedral church. God renew their strength. Come, spirit of life, and raise the dead by your power, especially those that we name in the chat now and those whose names we speak aloud. Pray for healing for Maureen and them and us in our own day in the harvest of justice. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray.
love. We know that you do not willingly inflict pain upon or grieve your children, and your dream for all is life abundant. We come to you now in sorrow and sadness at the death and violence inflicted on our siblings of St. Stephen's Church in Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Receive the souls of those who have died. Grant them peace in your arms of love. Be with those who are injured and suffer, those who are grieving and those who are frightened and dispirited. Help us as a nation to find ways to bring an end to this scourge of violence, which hurts your children and our human family. Give us the strength we need, the courage we must have, and the faith in you that will see us through. All this we pray and ask in the name of the Prince of Peace, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Please be seated. It's the um, custom of this service that announcements will be later, right, Canon Presenter? Yes. So the only announcement at this moment, and I'm looking at the cameras and I'm looking at you, is uh, to give generously. And you can do that. There's, there's the analog way of doing it, that is putting stuff in baskets. But you can also take your phone out, and those of you at, at other locations than here in the Cathedral of Grace, uh, you can take your phone out and give to Grace uh, the number. So you give to Grace, the number is 76278. And the word is what? Grace. <laughs> that is the word. So 76278, I encourage you to be generous to support the work of this great cathedral, which stretches far beyond the gathered congregation here and reaches many lives across the city, across our diocese, and further. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your sibling has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your sibling and then come and offer your gift.
May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, a mortal flesh, in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering Christ's radiant life, his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Francis and Claire and all your saints, past present and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the howling of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. The bread that we break is our share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
In thanksgiving, let us pray. Merciful God, may we who have been strengthened by this sacrament strengthen those in weakness, we who have been fed feed those in hunger, we who have been welcomed welcome others, we who have been seen and known see and know the needs of others. Give us your grace to respond always in loving service through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Welcome to Grace Cathedral. This truly is a house of prayer intended for all people. No matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome in this cathedral. It's a cathedral that is open six days a week, and the cathedral offices, however, <laughs> will be closed tomorrow in honor of Juneteenth. Morning prayer resumes on Tuesday. Please look at the note on ending slavery for good that's in your, in your leaflet. Uh, some of you, many of you were present for the inspiring conversation with our presiding bishop a few weeks ago on ending the punishment clause in the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, uh, an effort that is led by uh, two faithful lay people here at Grace Cathedral and many of us joining in that effort, which is uh, an effort that is fruitful, not only at the federal level, but in the state level as well, and should be undertaken by all faithful Christians. Celebrate the summer solstice with us on Monday, June 20th, 8 p.m. The San Francisco opera artists will perform pieces including selections from Romeo and Juliet. That should be really beautiful. The, uh, the Solstice is not a Christian feast, but it is a cosmic feast for the whole earth and the whole world. A very particular joy here at uh, this cathedral each year under uh, Jude Harm Canon Jude Harbin's leadership is the Vine Pride Mass. And it's um, back, as it says in your leaflet. Join us this Wednesday, 22nd at 6.30 p.m. This year's Family Values Service will have a sermon by the Reverend Dr. Cameron Partridge, who's a remarkable theologian and a remarkable Christian leader, uh, and you will be blessed uh, by his preaching, as we were blessed today, uh, Father Mauricio, by you. Their styles are somewhat different. Ambient Grace, join us on Friday, June 24, at 7 p.m. to celebrate Pride with A Day Without Your Love, a collaborative performance featuring Brown, Amy, and Flavia Elisa Mora, live from the labyrinth. And then... is also hybrid, um, so there were some prayers that you heard that were spoken by, um, in the chat by those who joined online. It's our custom to just say goodbye to them. And so to those of you who are still with us, um, to Jay Pitt from San Diego, to Michael, Pat, Richard, Suzanne, and M.E., um, we wish you all good things in the week ahead, and we look forward to praying again with you next Sunday. Please stand and join in We Shall Overcome.
Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Be patient with everyone, but make no peace with oppression. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, the source of all being, the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.